Donna Ashland, second straight start, second straight double double. Um, looking at her maybe being a permanent part of the lineup, or is that what's the way way off the table? You know, when when you um, when you're a starter, you you get the benefit of the doubt. I mean, Ashland's been coming, you know, and I think Ashland can provide that um, no matter where she is in the lineup, you know. But she makes it really hard. I mean, we 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 see uh, her contributions and we see her, you know, just her elevated play with with more minutes um, is really encouraging. So whatever way that we go, and we'll probably just go back with Chloe once Chloe gets her, you know, fully uh, healthy. Um, because if the tables were turned and Ash was the starter, um, she would get the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Coach, Ashlyn was in here earlier talking about how she feels like she's looking to score now, and that's part of why she's being more productive on the offensive end. How do you see her wheels turning there now um, as opposed to where they were at the end of, or beginning of the season? Well, her wheels are turning because we, we're we turning them. I mean, we want her to score. I mean, there's no question that uh, she rebounds the basketball. She defends, you know, like no other. I think the the, the one – element that's missing in her game is just consistently scoring and we are being very calculating and giving her the ball and see what she does with it I mean she's got to familiarize herself with with spots on the floor where she could be effective offensively and that takes experience and this is this has been great and I will just you know announce that Camilla will will go um, with her national team tomorrow or tonight I believe okay and she'll return um, next week, so she'll miss Missouri and she'll miss UConn. Hey, coach, speaking of Ashlyn and all that, just does it ever get old as a coach? I mean, these are Ashlyn and Lay are two players, local players. Does it ever get old watching them go out there now for you and have moments like that and games like this, even if maybe Ashlyn isn't always ready for that that <laughs> lay pass? Um, it, it doesn't. You know, we we work really hard recruiting both of them, like locally. Our all of our local talent. We want them to stay here. So we forge relationships with them and we envision, we envision the two of them playing together, playing a lot of minutes together, playing, you know, their their entire careers here. And they're doing a great job with filling each other out. I know Lay catches Ashlyn off guard a lot to the point where Ashlyn should stay ready. Um, and then I think they had a little argument out there on the floor. Um, but that's to be expected. Lay expects her to catch all of her passes and um, Ashlyn expects Lay to shoot him so she can get the rebound if she misses. <laughs> Speaking of Camilla, you had to get her out of the game almost immediately with those two fouls. How do you feel like, A, the, the front court kind of handled the extra minutes without her and how the team played overall without her now that you will, will miss her these next two games? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's unfortunate that she did pick up those two early fouls. and But it, it gave us an opportunity to just get some experience playing without her. Because um, we've got two games that we'll have to play without her um, that those, you know, those those opportunities um, were there for us. And we need we need a lot more, but that's all we got now. So we'll play Missouri on Thursday and without her. So we'll see if uh, if, if those experiences played big dividends for us on Thursday. Uh, I was just going to point out, too, that now without – Camilla, you can start both Ashlyn and Chloe if you want, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, it looked like the offense, piggybacking off Alan's question, it looked like the offense kind of found its form again when Camilla got back in there. The flow returned and things stretched out. She seems like, you know, she's much more a centerpiece player than she had been for, for this team the past couple of years. Yeah, I mean, it's forced. I mean, she is, she's a difference maker. And... I, I do think she needs to, you know, get more and more comfortable being the focal point. Um, I mean, it's it's natural for us to do that um, for her. It's probably a little unnatural for her to be the centerpiece because she's very, very unselfish. But um, for what her national team is going to need in the next in this coming week, she's going to have to shoulder some of that. So I'm hoping that they put her in a good position where it's. It's what we want. Like she embraces being the focal point, um, but I mean it's a process for her. I think it's going well. Like I, I do think she's doing um, different things out there. Like I, she's got two move games. She's not just you know going baseline and trying to 
figure out what she's going to do with the ball. There are more moves happening out there, and she's finding some success with them. It's not, it's not, you know, 100% success, and she has to be okay with that because she'll always be able to right the ship, and and she's done that the past two games. As someone who's also played for their country and uh, and trying to get into the Olympics, what were those conversations with Camilla like in terms of uh, having her take time away from the team for a little bit in the middle of a season? Because that's I'm sure it's probably uh, a little abnormal. But what were those conversations like with her? I mean, they're they're very simple. Like, I mean, we want the best players on our team, and sometimes the best players are the best players um, that represent another country. Um, and when we recruited her, we said that if there's an opportunity for you to go with your national team, go with your national team. Same with uh, LA. You know, last year going, I mean, a couple, last couple of years she she went to, you know, the Canadian national team uh, um, training camp and and competitions, and she's an Olympian. I mean, it, it only makes us feel good, but we do. I mean, we we'll we'll feel, or um, we'll feel the void that Camilla leaves with us, but I'm, I'm sure all the other post players are really preparing. I, I think Fagan's been preparing weeks weeks prior to, you know, this happening now because she knew Camilla was, was, was going with the national team, so she started doing extra cardio probably for the past month. So, and it was on her. Like, it wasn't something that we said, go do extra. It was on her um, to be ready. So, we'll, we'll call her, her number a lot over the next two days, and hopefully that builds uh, some confidence with her and just strengthens our, our, our front court. Coach, with uh, Malaysia, kind of the thing that everyone kind of is brought up is the offense and kind of the ability to create. But looking at her this season, defensively, she's really stood out. What, kind of, what type of impact do you think she has on that side of the ball? Um, huge. Like, like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm – I'm amazed, and I am proud, and I am. Uh, um, I'm, I, I see she's tapping into, you know, all of her greatness because it's just not making, you know, beautiful plays and creative plays. It is the whole gamut on both sides of the basketball, and, and she's seeing the effects of it. And I know she's confident, and the more and more experience she's getting out there, getting deflections and steals, the more and more she is more amped up to play on the defensive side of the basketball and and it's and I got a player like you know there are times when I couldn't play her because the defense was not very good now and I, I have to play her um, not just because of her offense but because of her defense and that's that's a, a mark of a really good young player who gets it Kind of off topic, not about one of the players in here, but Aaliyah Boston named to USA's roster. I see the smile. What does that mean to see your former players continue to uh, excel? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm smiling, but I'm also, you know, a little disappointed that Alicia Gray didn't, didn't get an opportunity to represent our, our country um, in this competition. She's still in the pool, so, you know, the jury's still out uh, whether or not she'll get a, um, an opportunity um, to represent our country in Paris. Um, but Aaliyah... I mean, Aaliyah's worked really hard. This is something that Aaliyah's wanted for a very long time, and she really doesn't want to wait until 2028 or 2032. Um, she's prepared herself to compete at the highest level, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really not surprised, like, at all. I mean, I do think our, our country needs her, needs her as one of the representatives. Um, just being young, just being talented, just, just gets it. On, on every level. So excited, excited to see her and see her career grow in this way. Thank you. Thank you.